Hi everyone, welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. And today we're going to be talking about World War II soldiers. Now these soldiers are made by Matchbox, but not really. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. It's not Matchbox, it's a knockoff of Matchbox. So they're using Matchbox uh, molds but they're doing it without license to do so. And uh, China is kind of famous for that, uh, not paying people for using their properties. So these are World War II figures from the North African campaign, which was from 1940 to 43. And I think the Germans became involved in the um, the war as well in February because the Italians had been severely uh, defeated by the British. I mean, I think it was like 26,000 British troops routed an army of 200,000 or something to that. You know, the Italian soldiers weren't, the, the, the story is Italian soldiers are really bad. That's not true. What was really bad was Italian officers. And that was true of World War I also. The Italian soldiers did their duty. Their officers were very arrogant and uh, treated their men very poorly. So they had uh, bad morale. So here we have the, the uh, British troops. There was two Scottish divisions in the order of battle for the 8th Army. And they were the Black Watch and the Camerons. And you can see with these toy soldiers that some of them have a tam shattern So let's take this guy here. And there he is. That's a cool figure, tossing on hand grenade. And he's wearing the tam shattern Now the, uh, the figures, these fig um, knockoffs, they compare pretty favorably with the originals. And I'll show you in just a minute uh, some of the originals that I have so you can get an idea. What Well, what are the differences? Uh, I, I really like these. If you want to expand your army, this is a cheap way to do it. And, you know, maybe they're not authentic Matchbox figures, but... They're pretty cool. Uh, one of the poses that I thought was really neat was this guy here. Now, someone else did too because they put 15, 15 of these guys in the bucket. And then they have only like one of these guys, the Piper. Uh, it's missing General Montgomery. The original Matchbox set has General Montgomery. You know, it's, he's famous for wearing the beret with the, uh, the sweater. Uh, there's only one, let's see, where did I put him? I guess it was this guy that was shot. There's only one of these in, came in the bucket. Now, in each bucket of soldiers, they were probably random, you know, the, there's probably someone at the factory uh, taking handfuls of them out of bins and throwing them in the bucket. So you only have two riflemen, two Bren gunners, uh, five Bren gunners kneeling. Um, you got some guys crawling and some Bren gunners in a prone position. There's the crawling guys with the Thompson. But like I said, it was very random what came in the bucket. So that's why I've got 15 of these guys. But let me show you why I think this guy is cool. Look at that. Can you see him? Here, let me move the camera. Okay, that's better. See that? I think that's awesome. I love that. By the way, this photograph is a fake uh, propaganda photograph. And what will reveal to you the authenticity or lack of it, if you will, is supposedly they're capturing a German tank 
And if you look real closely, it's got an Australian identification mark on the side. Uh, both sides did that. They would capture each other's equipment. They would put their tactical symbols and, and uh, emblems on the vehicle and off they'd go. And both sides uh, did that. The Germans had to do it out of force because their supply lines were constantly being uh, interrupted by um, the British. Um, I guess the Germans learned that they probably should have taken Malta. Okay, so um, how do they compare to the match original Matchbox? Well, I have a sample of those over here. I'm going to have to lift the camera up. I'm sorry, my hand is going to be a little shaky. Now, this is an original set of Matchbox uh, 8th Army that I bought at a hobby store in Northridge, California back in two. Uh, not 2000, wow, in 1984. Now, I got out of the Army in 1983. I went back to school, and there was a hobby shop near uh, where I went to school, and I would go there, and I would pick up boxes of uh, Airfix and Matchbox figures. I wasn't really what you'd call a hardcore collector at that time. I remember there was this girl named Sandy that I had a crush on from my work. And there's Montgomery, by the way, right there. And this guy looks like he's trying to hitch a ride. Hey, anyone, uh, excuse me, excuse me. I, I just want to go to Zuma Beach. Can you give me a ride? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm going to hit you with this rifle if you talk like that again. So those are all original Okay, so what about Sandy? I f didn't finish that story. Uh, so I set up all the figures. I was waiting uh, for my ride to go home. My brother was going to give me a ride. I didn't own a car at the time. And so I set up all these figures. And damn it, if Sandy doesn't come walking down the sidewalk and she sees me. And I'm hurriedly trying to put these things away before she can reach me. But I didn't make it. So uh, she looked at me and said, what are you doing with those toys? And I'm like, oh, um, I'm a history major, so I I like to uh, set up dioramas. And she oh, well, anyway, I went to lunch with her once, and that was it. She was done. <laughs> anyway, I guess I'm better off because now I can spend all my spare money if there is any on soldiers so um did i tell you guys that i have a complete eighth army uniform oh yeah i think i did i was then i got too heavy to wear it i wore it to uh, school one time now that, that got me uh some weird looks but iggy doesn't care iggy doesn't care about any of these people that say stuff to him I get a lot of it, like when I go to Toys R Us, women go and complain to management that there's a weird guy looking at G.I. Joe's. My friend Doug can go in there and nobody thinks anything of it because he's like 6'4", 6'3", a uh, very masculine guy, and I'm a short, well, now I'm a short, fat guy, and I look like Peter Griffin. Heh, <laughs> heh. Anyway, this is, uh, oh, you know what, guys, before I go, I should compare the two soldiers for you so you can get an idea how the knockoff compares to, oh, to the um, original. Now, the original, oh, jeez, it dropped it. The original is this sort of brownish khaki, and then the one that came in the bucket of soldiers is this, actually, uh, this color is probably closer to that. Um, 
So you can see there's really not much difference. If you put them down, you can see that one is slightly taller than the other. The original is slightly taller. And the reason for that is the bases. If you look at it here, you can see that the original base is a little thicker, which is uh, cause for the sort of height differential. Try and see if these are marked on the bottom. No, the, the originals are not marked, and the knockoffs are marked, but they just say China. So I think there was 13 poses originally uh, in the original Matchbox set. It came in a box, and you would get 15 soldiers in 13 different poses, which is quite a number of poses when you think about it. The only figures that you got doubles up on were the uh, Bren Gunner and the guy crawling with his Thompson machine gun. All the other figures are just one. I would really enthuse about this bucket of soldiers if they had more riflemen and other poses instead of, you know, 15 of this guy. I mean, I like this pose because of the picture up there. Can you see that? Okay, that's it. That's all I've got for uh, uh, Matchbox and Knockoff match, Matchbox uh, from China. And uh, I want to thank you guys for... Uh, joining the Iggy Army and getting Iggy with it. And I hope all of you are having a good afternoon and a, a good morning wherever you are in the world. It's it's probably morning somewhere. And thank you for coming along. Happy trails, everyone. Take care.